again. You're back with Colm here from MT Bushcraft. Um, we're going to do a few reviews today. Uh, we're going to cut a bit of timber. We're going to uh, look at a few saws. Uh, folding saws, the cheaper version and the general saw that's used in uh, by, by most, I'd say most bushcraft um, providers. This guy here is called a Laplander saw. It's made from uh, Swedish steel, good quality, uh, and the reason that uh, the tendency for most companies to go for this saw is because of the quality. Uh, they're practically uh, bomb proof, these guys. They're made by a company called Baco. Uh, many people will be familiar with it uh, uh, from from the, the point of view of uh, high quality steel and good cutting edge. Um, this particular saw, uh, price wise, I think is in probably there are different prices on the market. I suppose between twenty and forty euro, anything in between that. Uh, uh, but of course, can be bought uh, from uh, Making Tracks Bushcraft. Uh, the other saw we're going to look at is just this commonplace saw. It's a, it's one that was given to me uh, by a student who came on the course and who actually transferred over to one of these. But, you know, uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. But I just, as I was opening this, um, I think this saw has been used about twice or three times. The spring clip, which opens and closes it, broke. So, uh, problem straight away. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make an attempt to use this saw to cut through this piece of timber. From a safety perspective, usually what I do, or what I advise people to do, is to balance the weight so that my weight is transferred uh, evenly between this part and this part of the wood so that the saw doesn't jump. These saws tend to jump um, in the first couple of uh, pulls and, uh, and might cut your hand. So always safety is important, especially if you're out in, in the wilderness. Okay, saws like this generally cut on the pull. So when I pull, that's my first couple of bites into the, into the piece of wood. And you can see this one's doing nicely. It's a hardly used saw, so it, the, the, the blade should be pretty good. So we have about 15, 16 holes on that there now to cut through that piece of timber. Not safe, really, because of the, the quality of the, the spring-loaded safety catch here. Moving over to our backhoe. Button press here on the side, open, locks in place. This saw is about, I've, I've used it all through the summer this year, so um, it's not a new saw by any, by, by any standards. Okay, again, I do the same thing, my log is a little bit unstable, so okay, work away this way now tending to stick a little bit in the wood. But much, much quicker through the timber. When I finished, as with any tool, close it up, leave it down. Okay. So, to continue on, we're going to make an attempt at making a tent peg. Okay, a little bit more steady there. I have here a piece of sycamore. Sycamore being a non-native species. And you can see the size of the leaves, how it can block out the light, and these guys grow very, very quickly. So we don't mind cutting them out when we can. So what we're going to do is, uh, because we're going to need a few tent pegs, I'm going to have a go at making a tent peg. So I'll open up my Laplander again and uh, maybe cut off this end piece here. So 
So when I, when I have my hand here, you can see it's a little bit freer this time because I'm opening up the cut as I'm cutting along. And that way, by keeping my hand there, I can do that. Okay, so a tent peg I probably want, you know, about eight, ten inches maybe. Length is a good length for a tent peg. These guys hold really well in the ground. So, I've got my the beginnings. Okay. piece of wood there for battening. Put my saw away. Very important to put the tools away. Then you know where they are. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, my uh, batten here to batten my knife into the piece of wood. So, um, important here to keep my fingers out of the way I suppose. Uh, so just keep them over the edge of the log. Maybe if I go this way it might be a little bit easier to see on camera. Uh, keep my fingers over the edge here. And hit down straight in. Okay. I don't want to go too far in. I don't want to go any more than about a third of the way into the, into the piece of wood. Okay. Not that far in. So, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back into this stop cut that I've created. So I'm going to start pretty close to the stop cut first and just cut back in. I can see where I'm going from now. The danger is that, you see the way I use my thumb on top, the danger is that if I go too far away and try to cut into it I may miss it and end up cutting a piece out of the top end of the wood, which I don't want to do. So I'm just going to keep working back a little bit. So you can see again, I'm working on the far end of the log, the lo part of the log that's away from me. So from the center out is the safest. If I'm working in here, there's a danger that the log will tip this way and I can cut myself. And this is always a big deal. You know, injury is always a big deal out in the forest. Okay, so first piece done, I can now round off this. So if I round off this piece, it's called chamfering. Chamfering the edge means that when I, this is the piece I'm going to be hammering down on to put it into the, the tent peg into the ground. If I hit down on this as it is, it often will split out and uh, that's not really what I want. So what I do is I cut around here. and put as many cuts. And the more cuts I can put into this, the better chance it has of dispersing the energy from the blows that drive it into the ground. Okay, so that's my chamfer on the top. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a point on it. So this is a quite a thick piece of wood, so this will take a this will take a minute or two. So you just keep moving around like this. Power mostly comes rather than from the elbow here and these smaller muscles, trying to get the power into the shoulder muscles, which, which is really important when cutting 
using a knife for heavy work over a long period of time. Always keeping the knife in a strong pull moving forwards. If I want to do it slightly differently and I want more control, I can point the edge of the knife towards me like this and do a pulling action. More controlled. And this is where you need to watch your Gore-Tex jacket. Or any of those light materials that people tend to wear for outdoor activities. So there we have our tent peg.